What's up guys, Dan Kaplan from Inside the Cross here. I'm fired up for another video breakdown here and we're gonna take a look at the Water Dogs, sticking to the PLL with the championship coming up here on Sunday. And for the Water Dogs breakdown, we're gonna take a look at Dylan Warden and Nett. We're gonna take a look at the face-off strategy, some of their early offense, sliding to Nolting at the island, and all sorts of other stuff. So with all of that in mind, let's get right to it. And right here, we're going to start off with face-off strategy. And right from the get-go, we have four really good clips, all different styles. The first one, Courier right to himself. He's going to draw a bunch of eyes, and he's going to end up with an assist here to McArdle on the back door. And part of the reason this happens is certainly because he's such a threat when he has the ball, so everybody off-ball has to at least be aware of what he's doing. With and what we see is just the variety of ways that the Water Dogs are able to be effective here against the Canyons off the draw. And so the first one, Courier wins to himself. Then he gets the assist there on the uh, back door to McArdle. Second one, scores on his own, winning forward against a pole, handles the pressure, gets downhill, and scores. So now a third option here, he wins backwards to himself. They vacate all that space out. These guys are going to clear all of that space. Back behind, a defender goes run into the box. So now when Courier steps back over, now you got offense right away. They swing that thing to the far side, and he's attacking right away. You have 25 on the shot clock about when he starts to go, and Connor Kelly draws a flag out of it. So effective play there. And now a third strategy. You see that new point there over on the side. We're moving into the next piece of the puzzle here. Not only is it effective, to have this strategy here where we're dumping it into the corner and now the cannons have to clear it. They have to do it against a strong ride. And then once they do get it cleared and actually get over midfield, they have to deal with the double pole look here from the water dogs. And because they do it off the draw, it's very easy to get into and they're disruptive out of it. So as that ball crosses midline, it's about 25 seconds. We still haven't really had the first dodge in this cannons offense yet. And that won't happen until about right here with 15 on the shot clock. And so right there, we have the double pole look that we were talking about with poles on midfielders and Matt Witcher guarding Marcus Holman. And this is the first time out of this look, right off the draw, that they get the ball into Holman's stick and have him attack with speed or attack this matchup. And they get a decent look with these defenders here on the backside. Higgins is ready to rotate. Sabia is ready to rotate. And again, it's another situation here where they defend a short clock with a double pole, and it's a one and done, one shot for the cannons before it's essentially a chuck to the corner or a desperation heave. And because I know nobody wants to just take my word for it off of one clip, here we go. We have another one where Curry will win the face off, send this thing with a perfect bocce ball down to the corner. I don't know if you guys realize this, but on the list of things not to do is play Zach Courier and bocce ball for money. I think I'd go broke off that. And so right here you have him drop it into the corner, and now the cannons are looking to clear it. They have to get through this aggressive ride. The attackmen take no prisoners here. And by the time they cross midfield, it's under 20 on the shot clock. And by the time they even get their first dodge, it's going to be, you know, really late clock. Don't have all their personnel on until 12 seconds. First dodge happening at about 10. And again, you have the double pull. And in this exact situation, nobody has to guard a dodge besides a pull. So this clip here is a really good one. You get to see Courier dropping that thing in the corner. Cannons have to clear it. And then it's a one and done situation. And the water dogs are in a really good spot to defend short clock with pulls up in a disruptive spot and against a short shot clock. And the next piece of the puzzle here that has the water dogs clicking and ready for a chance at defending the title here is their plan defensively and specifically for single players, right? And in this moment, in this matchup, in this game against the Cannons, it was about Ben Randall and Ashwin Nolting and then having a team plan for it. And so that plan, they wanted to extend, they wanted to deny his touches, they wanted to eat space when he got to the island, and they wanted to be prepared to have to slide if they needed to, and all of those things come to fruition. This is a great clip here. You're going to see Ward pull Hannah up. So right now he's eating space for an inside roll, right? Liam is hot to anything topside or just when he needs to go. Ben is on top of it, no ego, just recovers, right? And now everybody's on time. We got sticks and gloves. Good feed inside, it's a good cut, and they get a good look out of it, but the dogs in general defend that really well, and it's a great clip to kind of understand that plan for Asher. And a massive part of that plan is making sure that Knowlton catches it deep at X, 
heels on the end line or in this instance doesn't catch it because he's not able to operate comfortably because Randall is out there stepping out extending and making it you know tough making it so that it's not just simple exchanges and easy into his stick all right in the last one of these clips here where we're going to highlight this Randall uh, matchup and the plan for Asher Nolting right here so we've talked about the extension this time Ben is able to extend get a stick on it it stays Cannon's ball but it allows the defense to totally reset and address the situation here again this pick play the guy guarding the pickers above the goal eating space ready to help to the island Liam right there again is ready to eat space and showing and that's just going to bait the ball out of Nolting sticks if he gets into a post up there someone's coming and we could start the early O clips right here as Hayes gets one in transition, but we're going to look at a different look that's also involving Charlie Hayes. And right here, this is pretty patented. Water dogs do this a ton. We'll get the ball to Sowers and have a short stick D mid go behind with an O mid and set a pick. Either looking to get him trapped, hoping that they switch so that Sowers can exploit a mismatch, uh, or that, as you see in this instance, he's going to be able to turn the corner and score himself. And one of the keys to look at here is Keelty starting to work to get over that pick before Sowers just refuses it and then comes back up the other side. And with his speed, defenders have to start to work and find and navigate those picks early or they're toast on the other side. But if you start to do it too early, you're toast on the refusal. So a really tough look there that will take great bracket play from the short stick deep mid. And here you have another look at this early offense for the Water Dogs that was just a complete display here against the Cannons. And I actually got asked, how does this happen so often to the Cannons? And I think the ultimate answer is the variety of looks they have to defend in transition. It's picks, it's dodges in transition, it's fish hooks above the goal from an attackman that just cleared the ball, right? And so as coaches to the Cannons, you couldn't go tell them what to expect. And it was all these different variety of early offense. And this is one that like is completely unscripted attackman on an O mid fish hook above the goal. And I know a lot of fans have already seen this one because Scarpello's reaction gives it all away. But again, you have another location for a short stick D mid setting a pick for Sowers. Here he's able to take this thing on the wing on a razor angle, get underneath, and then finish. And here you see a, a really good example of the short stick D mids for the water dogs. Once they get set up and they start to set this pick, they are constantly manipulating exactly where they're setting it to make it a really really difficult task for the on-ball defender to locate the pick and consistently find a way that they're either they're going to navigate over or under because that pick is always moving it makes it really tough this is a good angle here you also see there's very little help so as soon as Sowers gets a step underneath he knows he's got all that space he's going to be able to get across the, to the front of the cage and so here you have again another look that makes this water dogs early offense dangerous and a huge piece of the puzzle is the fact that it's coming from anywhere and everywhere on the field and from any one of their personnel. And now we're going to hit the piece of the puzzle that I think gives the archers the most stress, the Dylan Ward effect. You can do everything right. You can work up the most elaborate scheme you want possible. You can work up a wide open look and still you're going to have to make sure that the ball ends up going past Dylan Ward who's been playing at an incredible level. And here we see a ton of really high quality saves. Nolting on the question mark. We just saw Drenner on the feed inside. Here you got sub games leading to a skip at top center, right? That's not the highest quality shot spot but a great location here you have an adjacent slide to Holman on a step down and Ward is up to the task and that right there is the example I'm thinking of right the archers can do a whole ton to be ready for this defense they can do a whole ton to orchestrate open looks but at the end of the day they're still going to have to find a way to beat the Dylan Ward effect uh -huh.